The Chinese national football team Chinese, Zhang Guo Guo Jia Zhu Chu Dui recognized as China PR by FIFA, is the national association football team of the People's Republic of China and is governed by the Chinese Football Association. The team is colloquially referred to as Team China. Chinese, Zhang Guo Dui the National Team. Chinese, Guo Jia Dui or Guo Zhu. Chinese, Guo Zhu short for Chinese, Guo Jia Zhu Chu Dui Pinyin, Guo Jia Zhu Chu Dui, literally, National Football Team. The Chinese Football Association was founded in 1924 by the Republic of China and joined FIFA in 1931. Following the Chinese Civil War, the Football Association was reformed by the newly founded People's Republic of China. They remained affiliated with FIFA until 1958, when they withdrew, but they rejoined the organization in 1979. China has won the EAFF East Asian Cup twice in 2005 and 2010 and have been runners-up at the AFC Asian Cup twice in 1984 and 2004. Although China failed to score a goal in their FIFA World Cup debut appearance during the 2002 FIFA World Cup, losing all their matches, qualifying for the tournament has been considered the greatest accomplishment in the country's football history. Although modern football lacks a distinguished history in China, there were an estimated 250 million viewers for the 2004 AFC Asian Cup final, which China lost 3-1 to arch-rivals Japan, the largest single-event sports audience in the country's history at that time. History Republic of China national football team 1939. China's first ever international representative match was arranged by Elwood Brown, president of the Philippine Athletic Association who proposed the creation of the Far Eastern Championship Games, a multi-sport event considered to be a precursor to the Asian Games. He invited China to participate in the inaugural 1913 Far Eastern Championship Games held in the Philippines, which included association football within the schedule. To represent them it was decided that the winner of the football at the Chinese National Games in 1910 should have the honor to represent the country, where it was won by South China Football Club. The club's founder and coach Ma Qing Chinese Mo Qing would become China's first coach and on 4 February 1913 in a single one-off tournament game held in the Manila he led China to a 2-1 defeat against the Philippines national football team. The political unrest of the Xinhai Revolution that mired China's participation in the first tournament, especially in renaming the team as Republic of China national football team, did not stop Shanghai being awarded the 1915 Far Eastern Championship Games. Once again South China Football Club, now known as South China Athletic Association won the right to represent the nation. This time in a two-legged playoff against the Philippines, China won the first game 1-0 and then drew the second 0-0 to win their first ever tournament. With the games being the first and only regional football tournament for national teams outside Britain, China looked to establish themselves as a regional powerhouse by winning a total of nine championships. The Chinese Football Association was founded in 1924 and then was first affiliated with FIFA in 1931. With these foundations in place, China looked to establish themselves within the international arena and along with the Japanese national football team, they were the first Asians to participate in the football at the Summer Olympics when they competed within the football at the 1936 Summer Olympics held in Germany. At the tournament, China were knocked out within their first game at the round of 16 when they were beaten by Great Britain Olympic football team 2 0 on 6 August 1936. On 7 July 1937, the Second Sino Japanese War officially erupted, which saw the relations between China and Japan completely eroded, especially once it was announced that Japan would hold the 1938 Far Eastern Championship Games. The tournament would be officially cancelled while Japan held their own tournament called the Anniversary of the Japanese Empire, which included the Japanese-occupied Manchukuo to represent China. None of the games during the Second Sino-Japanese War are officially recognized and once the war ended on 9 September 1945 China looked to the Olympics once again for international recognition. 
On 2 August 1948 China competed in the football at the 1948 Summer Olympics where they were once again knocked out in the last 16, this time by Turkey national football team in a 4–0 defeat. When the players returned they found the country in the midst of the Chinese Civil War. When it ended, the team had been split into two, one called the Chinese National Football Team and the other called Republic of China National Football Team later renamed Chinese Taipei National Football Team. Topic 1950 to 1979. China, under the newly instated People's Republic of China, reformed the Chinese Football Association before having FIFA acknowledge their 1931 membership on the 14th of June 1952. Finland, who were one of the first nations to hold diplomatic relations with China's new government, invited the country to take part in the 1952 Summer Olympics. Li Fenglu would become the country's first permanent manager to lead them in the tournament, however unfortunately the Chinese delegation was delayed and they missed the entire competition, nevertheless the Finland national football team would still greet Li and the Chinese team with a friendly game on 4 August 1952 making it People's Republic of China's official first game, which ended in a 4-0 defeat. In preparation for entering their first FIFA competition, China sent a young squad to train in Hungary in 1954. However, when they entered the 1958 FIFA World Cup qualification process, China were knocked out by Indonesia. On the 7th of June 1958, China stopped participating within any FIFA recognized football events when FIFA officially started to recognize Republic of China, Chinese Taipei, as a different country. This sparked a diplomatic argument that had already seen China withdraw from the 1956 Summer Olympics for the same reasons. For years China would only play in friendlies with nations such as Albania, Burma, Cambodia, Guinea, Hungary, Mongolia, North Korea, North Vietnam, Pakistan, Sudan, the Soviet Union, and the United Arab Republic who recognized People's Republic of China as the sole heir to the China name. On 25 October 1971 the United Nations would recognize the country as the sole heir to the China name in their General Assembly Resolution 2758 Act. In 1973 the team, which had been using the name Republic of China would rename themselves as Chinese Taipei. These acts would see China rejoin the international sporting community, first by becoming a member of the Asian Football Confederation in 1974 and by rejoining FIFA again in 1979. Topic: 1980 to 2002. With the end of the Cultural Revolution and international recognition of their sovereignty finally acknowledged, Chinese sport would emerge from a traumatic period that greatly affected them socially and politically. The 1974 Asian Games reintroduced the Chinese football team back into international football while the 1976 AFC Asian Cup saw them have a relatively successful campaign where they came third. The Chinese National League restarted after being greatly affected by the political turmoil. Also the introduction of televisions in Chinese households reached 20 million sets by 1982, and with an audience of 350 million, it saw association football regain its popularity, rival and eventually takes over badminton and table tennis as the country's main spectator sport. In 1980, China participated in the 1982 FIFA World Cup qualifiers for a berth in the 1982 World Cup, but they lost a playoff game against New Zealand. During the 1986 FIFA World Cup qualifiers for the 1986 World Cup, China faced Hong Kong at home in the final match of the first qualifying round on 19 May 1985 where China only needed a draw to advance. However, Hong Kong produced a 2-1 upset win which resulted in riots inside and outside the stadium in Beijing. During the 1990 FIFA World Cup qualifiers for the 1990 World Cup, China again reached the final round of qualifying. They just missed out on qualifying as they conceded two goals in the final three minutes against Qatar in their final group match. During the 1994 FIFA World Cup qualifiers for the 1994 World Cup, when they were led by their first ever foreign manager, Klaus Schlappner, China failed to reach the final round of qualifying, coming second behind Iraq. China was on the verge of making it through the 1998 FIFA World Cup qualifiers for the 1998 World Cup, but lost crucial matches at home against Qatar and Iran. 
In 1987, the first Chinese footballers moved abroad when future national team player Xie Yuxin joined FC Svola Netherlands and ex-national teamer Gu Guangming joined SV Darmstadt 98 Germany. In 1988, national team captain Jia Shochuan and striker Liu Heguang both joined FK Partizan Yugoslavia. On the 26th of January 2000, China beat Guam 19-0 during the 2000 Asian Cup qualification, which was the world record for the largest victory margin in an international football match at the time. However, the record was broken by Kuwait 19 days later. On 7 October 2001, China, under the direction of manager Bora Milutinovic, advanced to the 2002 FIFA World Cup which was the first time China had ever qualified for the FIFA World Cup. However, they failed to score a single goal at the tournament, lost all three group matches, and were subsequently eliminated in the group stage. Nonetheless, qualifying to the World Cup was deemed as China's greatest success ever in international stage. Topic 2002 to 2009. In November 2004, China failed to advance through the preliminary qualification stage for the 2006 World Cup, losing out to Kuwait on goal difference, despite China's seven goals against Hong Kong in the last qualifying match. Manager Ari Han was later replaced by Zhu Guanghu after the qualification process. In August 2005, China won the 2005 East Asian Football Championship, its first ever international title, with a 1–1 draw against South Korea, 2–2 draw against Japan, and a 2–0 win against North Korea. During the qualification process for the 2007 AFC Asian Cup in 2006, the team became the subject of immense criticism and national embarrassment in the media when they had managed to score only one goal, Xiao Jiayi's penalty kick during injury time, against Singapore at home and only managed a draw with Singapore in the away game. During preparations for the 2007 AFC Asian Cup, the team spent the weeks leading up to the tournament on a tour of the United States. While the 4-1 loss to the United States was not unexpected, a 1-0 loss to Major League Soccer side Real Salt Lake which finished bottom of the league in the 2007 season caused serious concern. During the 2007 AFC Asian Cup, the team played three group matches, winning against Malaysia, drawing with Iran after leading 2-1, and losing 3-0 to Uzbekistan. After high expectations, China's performance at the tournament drew immense criticism on online communities which condemned the manager, the players, and even the Chinese Football Association. Zhu was later replaced as manager by Vladimir Petrovic after the poor performances. Some commented that China's reliance on foreign managers for the past decade had been an indicator of its poor domestic manager development. In June 2008, China failed to qualify for the 2010 FIFA World Cup, losing against Qatar and Iraq at home. After the 2008 Summer Olympics, Petrovic was sacked as the manager and Yin Tisheng was announced as the team's caretaker. Topic: <laughs> Gao Hongbo era. In April 2009, China appointed the young Gao Hongbo as the new manager, replacing Yin Tisheng. His arrival saw China opt for a new strategy, turning towards ground-passing tactics and adopting the 4-2-3-1 formation. It was noted that Chinese footballers had relied too heavily on the long ball tactic for almost a decade. Wei Di, the chief of the Chinese Football Association, stressed that, any time, no matter win or loss, they must show their team spirit and courage. I hope, after one year's effort, the national team can give the public a new image." Under Gao, China drew its first game against Germany 1–1 in May 2009. Afterwards, China were able to gain 13 points in the during the qualification process for the 2011 AFC Asian Cup. This led to a revival in interest amongst some Chinese football fans as China had also won 1-0 against France in June 2010 as well as holding 2010 FIFA World Cup quarter-finalists Paraguay to a 1-1 draw in September 2010. This led to some supporters even thinking that reaching the semi-finals of the 2011 AFC Asian Cup was possible, however, China were knocked out in the group stages during the 2011 AFC Asian Cup. This led to some discontent amongst Chinese fans and it seemed that this was the reason that eventually led to the sacking of Gao as manager by the Chinese Football Association. 
Although Gao's winning percentage was the highest for a Chinese manager since Nian Weizi as well as the team having not lost since the end of the 2011 AFC Asians Cup, this was still not enough to convince the Chinese Football Association of replacing Gao. In August 2011, he was formally sacked as manager and replaced by José Antonio Camacho, less than a month before the qualification process for the 2014 FIFA World Cup. But corruption still remained a major problem in Chinese football and in 2010, Wei admitted that, "...Chinese football has degraded to an intolerable level. It has hurt the feelings of fans and Chinese people at large." He also added that he was confident in being able to aid Chinese men's and women's football return to the leading status in Asia and world respectively in the future. Wei pointed out six major problems which had caused the huge slump of Chinese football in the past few years while he dissected the dwindling pool of youth player selection as being a big problem along with unhealthy professional leagues affected by gambling and match-fixing scandals. Topic. Appointment of José Antonio Camacho On 13 August 2011, José Antonio Camacho was appointed as the new manager of the team, signing a three-year deal for a reported annual salary of $8 million. Wei Di, the chief of the Chinese Football Association, explained the decision as being part of a long-term plan to help the country catch up with rivals Japan and South Korea. He noted that Compared with our neighbors Japan and South Korea, Chinese football is lagging far behind, we need to work with a long-term view and start to catch up with a pragmatic approach. A lot of our fans expect China to qualify for the 2014 World Cup Finals in Brazil. They are afraid that changing the coach at the last moment may cause bad effect to the team's qualifying prospect. I can totally understand that. But we do not have any time to waste. Yu Hongchun, the vice president of the Chinese Football Administrative Center, also stated, "...the qualifying stage of 2014 World Cup is just a temporary task for him. Even if the task is failed, Camacho will not lose the job. When we started to find a new coach for the national team, we mainly focus on European countries such as Germany, the Netherlands and Spain." First of all, they have advanced football concepts, and secondly they have a productive youth training system, which we can learn from. We hope he can help us to find a suitable style. However, China failed to qualify for the 2014 FIFA World Cup, after only finishing third place in the third round of qualifying during the 2014 FIFA World Cup qualification, with three wins and three losses out of six games played. In June 2012, during a friendly match against Spain, many football experts and pundits alike expected Spain to easily steamroll China. However, many critics were stunned to find China and Spain still deadlocked 0-0 until the 84th minute when a goal from David Silva won the match 1-0 for Spain. Even though they lost, this performance was viewed highly in the media. However, disappointment would soon strike again two months later when China faced Sweden in a friendly only to lose 1-0 with the lone goal coming minutes after the second half. Several months later, Camacho managed a youthful team to an 8-0 loss against Brazil on 10 September 2012 which would go on record as China's worst ever international defeat in the team's history. This massive loss also succumbed China to their worst ever FIFA ranking 109th. It was the worst defeat for China since their loss to the United States in 1992. After a disappointing qualification process for the 2014 FIFA World Cup, Camacho led China during their qualification process for the 2015 AFC Asian Cup where in the first group match China lost 2-1 to Saudi Arabia. Camacho then managed China on 15 June 2013 against Thailand in a shocking 5-1 loss to a team ranked 142 and 47 places below China. This embarrassing loss then saw Camacho subsequently sacked a week as manager after immense pressure from the media with Fu Bo assigned as the caretaker. Alan Perrin era After Alain Perrin was announced as the new manager in March 2014, China continued through the qualification process for the 2015 AFC Asian Cup, qualifying for the tournament by being the best third-placed team. 
After undergoing a 10-match unbeaten streak before the tournament, China won their first group match of the tournament 1–0 against Saudi Arabia through a deflected free kick from Yu Hai. They won their second group match 2–1 against Uzbekistan and subsequently qualified for the knockout stage as the group winner. This was the first time in 11 years that China were not eliminated during the group stage. China won 2–1 against North Korea in their final group match, however, the team was knocked out by in a 2–0 loss against Australia during the quarter-finals. After Perrin was sacked for the team's poor performance at the 2018 FIFA World Cup qualifiers, former coach Gao Hongbo returned to the role on 3 February 2016. In his first two matches, Gao secured the team's passage to the final Asian qualifying round by beating the Maldives and Qatar to overtake Hong Kong to second. This also secured China PR's qualification for the 2019 AFC Asian Cup. China started their World Cup hunt by a 2–3 defeat to South Korea, which China almost made a comeback after being led three goals, which was praised by press and medias for its valiant efforts, and China's impressive performance continued with a 0–0 draw to AFC's highest-ranked team Iran at home, leading its supporters to be enthusiastic over China's position for the World Cup in Russia. However, what followed later was a complete shock, as China lost 0-1 at home to Syria and 0-2 away to Uzbekistan. After losing to Uzbekistan 0-2 in October 2016, Gao Hongbo resigned. His team had been winless in the first four matches of the final qualifying stage for the World Cup, including an embarrassing home loss to Syria which was widely criticized by fans. Marcelo Lippi era On the 22nd of October 2016, Marcelo Lippi was appointed manager of the team ahead for the last remaining matches. His first task was up against Qatar, where China drew 0-0 at home to the Middle Eastern opponent, as the fans, having lost enthusiasm with what happened at four beginning matches, started to question over the team's ability. Lippi decided to revamp the team and China's performances improved greatly. China defeated South Korea 1-0 for the first time in a FIFA-sanctioned tournament, amidst the heat of tensions over South Korea's deployment of THAAD which was seen by China as a threat. The victory against South Korea led China's slim hope alive, only to found themselves lost 0-1 away to Iran. China's chance turned slimmer with a 2-2 draw to Syria, forcing China to win the last remaining matches while hoping Syria unable to do something surprise. China did it well by winning 1-0 over Uzbekistan at home and Qatar 2-1 away, but following Syria's 2-2 draw with Iran, the team was not able to be qualified for the 2018 World Cup under his tenure, but improvements could be seen from China's performances. Lippi will depart following the 2019 Asian Cup. Team image <laughs> Kits and crests China's home kit is traditionally all red with a white trim while their away kit is traditionally an inverted version of the home kit, fully white with a red trim. During the 1996 AFC Asian Cup, China employed a third kit which was all blue with a white trim and was used against Saudi Arabia during the tournament. The team has also started to use cooling vests in certain warmer climates. After decades of having Adidas producing the team's kits, China's current kit has been produced and manufactured by Nike since 2015. Topic: <laughs> Kit suppliers. Topic. Stadium Workers' Stadium is their current home since its opening in 1959, located in the Chaoyang District, in northeastern Beijing. Its capacity is 66,161, and it covers a land area of 350,000 square meters. It is used both for international matches and by the China Super League team, the Beijing Guoan. Rivalries 
Traditionally, China's greatest rival has been Japan. This was exemplified after Japan beat China 3–1 in the 2004 AFC Asian Cup final when Chinese fans began to riot near the north gate of the workers' stadium. The rioting was said to be provoked by controversial officiating during the tournament and the heightened anti-Japanese sentiment at the time. China's most recent tournament meeting with Japan was at the 2017 EAFF E1 Football Championship where Japan won 2–1. China went on to finish as third place in the tournament, while Japan finished second. Another well-known rivalry is also with fellow neighbor South Korea. China played 27 matches against South Korea between 1978 and 2010, a span of 32 years, without winning a single match 11 draws and 16 losses. The media coined the term, Koreaphobia. To describe this phenomenon, but China finally registered its first win against South Korea on 10 February 2010, winning 3–0 during the 2010 East Asian Football Championship and eventually going on to win the tournament. A rivalry with Hong Kong has been created due to political tension. With Hong Kong fans booing the Chinese national anthem, which Team Hong Kong share with Team China, 2018 World Cup qualifier matches were also very tense with both matches resulting in 0-0 draws. Media coverage Home and away matches are typically shown on CCTV5, CCTV5+, GDTV Sports, STV Sports, BTV6, and several other local sports channels in mainland China. Coaching staff Players. Topic. Current squad The following players were called up for the training camp of 2019 AFC Asian Cup. Caps and goals are correct as of 20 November 2018, after the match against Palestine. Topic. Recent call-ups The following players have been called up within the last 12 months. Notes Seuss player suspended INJ player withdrew from the squad due to an injury Rhett retired from the national team Pre-preliminary squad, standby Deck declined personal matters Topic. Previous squads Topic. Recent and forthcoming fixtures Topic twenty eighteen Topic twenty nineteen Topic Competitive record Topic All time results As of the sixteenth of October twenty eighteen, counted for the FIFA A level matches only. All matches before the founding of Chinese Football Association in 1924 are not counted as a level match by FIFA. This list consists of Olympic Games, Olympics qualification and matches between 1913 and 1923, but all of them will be deleted from list. http colon slash slash www.worldfootball.net slash teams slash China dash team slash twenty one slash http colon slash slash www.worldfootball.net slash team slash china dash team slash https colon slash slash www.fifa.com slash live dash scores slash team slash country equals ch and slash men slash matches slash index dot html all matches before the founding of Chinese Football Association in 1924 are not counted as a level match by FIFA 1913 to 1923 correct table 
the 2nd of June 2018, http colon slash slash www.worldfootball. Net teams, China team, 21. 546P268W115D156L991 to 570 plus 421. Topic: Competition history. Topic: FIFA World Cup record. Topic AFC Asian Cup record. Topic Olympic Games record. For 1992 to 2016, see China national under 23 football team. Topic Asian Games record. Asterisk including 1998 onwards until 2010. For 2002 to 2018, see China national under 23 football team. Topic EAFF East Asian Cup record. Topic Far Eastern Championship Games record. All matches before the founding of Chinese Football Association in 1924 are not counted as A level match by FIFA. Counted for the FIFA A level matches only. Statistics <laughs> 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 